client description in the file. Well, I, I'm not sure 100% that uh, it will be offered in person in fall, um, but um, that's up to you. And if you could find a way to practice HTML in the meantime, that would be great. Okay, um, let's get rolling here and continue with our example. We may or may not have internet. What do you mean use? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, I post all the examples online to Canvas. If you go and look in the module for the given week, You'll see like after the video for the day, you'll see the example. So like here's a lecture for 1015. Here's the example for 1015. All right, we're going to build on this example. And the last thing that we talked about was floating. And floating works like this. You float to the left, the element is moved towards the left, and the browser determines if there's sufficient space to put it on the same line as the thing to its left. And if it is, it'll put it there. If not, it'll drop it down to the next line. So we see this example. Actually, I have each of these floated to the left and to the right. Let me go and change it to how I want it to be. Let's float them both to the left. And if I do this, at this window width, there's enough to put them side by side. So. The one has a width of 50%, the one has a width of 200%. Now, remember what muddies the waters is the fact that the margin, the padding, and the border get added on to it. And remember that it gets added on to both sides, the left and the right. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that it gets a little tricky because of all the possibilities you have as far as width goes. In this case, we have a width of 50%, but we have a minimum width of 400 pixels. And so when you mix percentages and pixels, it can get a little tricky. But the basic idea is the same. It looks and sees, will this fit alongside the element to its left? If it does, it puts it there. If not, as we get the window narrower, it drops it down below. This, these are sometimes called liquid layouts because the, the uh, content sort of conforms itself to the shape of the container, just like a liquid conforms itself to the shape of the container that it's in. Okay, so that was, we went over this example. We're now going to take that and we're going to uh, put it with uh, the actual prototype that we've been developing. So let me copy Let me copy, say, prototype one. and make it prototype 5. And then we will make it to achieve the layout with a floating 
layout. So I'm going to start out by getting rid of all of my CSS. So all my CSS is gone. And I'm just going to start positioning the main elements on the page. And again, this is generally the approach that I make, is position sort of in broad terms. The main elements of the page, what I mean by those are the main structural elements, sort of the things that are children directly underneath the body tag, which normally are going to be like a header, a nav, either a section, an article, and a side. <coughs> and a footer. With all these CSS, it's best to use the HTML5 tags because you can more precisely point to things. Because prior, uh, prior to HTML5, you had one thing that sort of, one tag that sort of filled all the roles of the section, the footer, the nav, the header, and that was the div tag. So you had to do things like giving divs IDs to make it act like a header or a navigation <coughs> or whatever. Well, now we actually have tags for those, so we might as well take advantage of them. I'm going to start by floating each of them to the left. So I'm going to say header, float left. nav, section, and footer. So all of these float left. And if we view that page, it doesn't look much different than it did before. Now the reason for that is because the width, if you float all of them, the width, if the default width of a block tag is 100%. So if this is 100%, this is 100%, this is 100%, there's no room for things to float side by side with each other. So you need to put some widths on here. So the header, I'm going to give a width of 100% to. The nav, Maybe I'll give a width of 20% to. The section, maybe I'll give a width of 70% to. And the footer, I'll give a width of 100% to. Now, if we look at this, uh, I don't, that shouldn't matter, but I'll put it in. that a smaller percentage. OK. Don't know why it's not working in that version of the browser. Um, but we are not going to worry about that right now. Now, 
Notice that right off the bat, just with a couple of tweaks to that, we have it more or less working the way that we want it to, which is very, with very little CSS code. All right. Sometimes when you view a page in a browser, um, the page gets cached. And I'm wondering if that was a caching issue with um, Internet Explorer or whatever. By cache, it means it gets put into browser storage, and you could be reading a slightly older version of it. At any rate, if we view it in Google Chrome, it looks correct. There is header, nav, section, and footer alongside of it. This is very close to the layout that we want with like very little code. Yes? Uh, my question is, uh, if you put like section close, right? right. Exactly. I've got to do the same, like, to put section, uh, align, like, whatever, going left. Right. They all got to be the same? Yes. Yeah, if you put section, again, all the HTML tags that have this. Now, header, nav, and footer, you probably will only have one of anyhow. But section is the one where it, uh, it could be a factor. Let's go and... Because I put a section ID to every single one of my paragraphs, and I uh -huh. like, They'll all get the same style rule. And then you can look to see if that's, that's the way that you want it or not. Okay, let's, go, let's go and let's put a different section, a second section on here, because I think that's a really good question. All right, I'm going to grab this, and we'll grab a section that contains a paragraph of Greek text. And I'll give these guys a border so that we can see it more apparently. One thing that I often do and I think is a good technique is if you're styling something and it shows up a way that you're not really sure why it did it that way, Go in and make a visual change to it, uh, such as put a border around it or give it a background color. Even if you don't want it in the final version, it's a good idea to do that because then you can see exactly where things get laid out. So in this example, I have two sections now in my HTML. I have uh, a section that contains a photo and I have a section that contains Greek text. Now when I view it in my browser, notice I forgot to save both. Notice what I get. I get it floating like that. Now these things will never be the same size, right? These will never be side by side, rather, because just the math, we can tell that 60% um, times 2 is 120%. So those by definition, can't fit next to each other. If we make these 30%, though, then we can float them side by side. Now, what's the problem here? The problem here is that image is bigger than the 30% of the page. All right? So what I can do to fix that is I can say, any image within a section, give it a width of Now those things are next to each other. At a certain width, notice that things start collapsing on each other. And that's kind of a problem. So I typically will give a minimum width. Um, part of me wants to say if someone has a window that big 
and they deliberately made it that big, well, they kind of deserve what they get. But I could also do something like give a minimum width to my different elements. Let's try minimum width 100 px for that. Try 130 px. That'll keep it from doing that. Now notice how this works, and this is kind of cool. As it gets smaller, boom, it drops down below. Right, because I gave it, a, I gave this guy a minimum width. Now, things like this are moving in the direction of what we can do to make our pages look good for a mobile uh, device. Uh, we'll talk more about that um, possibly the end of day today or Monday. I will want to, I am going to put in another thing right now though for this one because this one's sort of our, our precursor to developing a page that looks good. And that is, there's a viewpoint, viewport directive that we can put in. Viewport meta tag, not directive. And let's pop that in here. Let's pop that in the head of this guy. And then if we go and view this in a mobile device, Starting to see what it will look like. That would be an iPad. Let's make it a Nexus and so on. How did you get that made better? This little, when this little cursor appears, okay. it's like you're dragging it with your finger when you hold your mouse down. That isn't what I expected. We'll, we'll leave this for now. We'll, we'll worry about this some other day. All right. So. We have our page, and again, it's side by side. As we get narrower, it drops it down below. That's moving in the direction of having a site that will work mobile and under both a desktop machine slash laptop or a mobile browser. Now, from here, we can do anything that we wanted to do um, with our web page. I'm going to get rid of the borders now that I've used the borders to debug. But to answer the question, yeah, both sections. If I wanted to treat a different section a different way, um, I would have to give either an ID or a class. All right? Or if really uh, it meant what it was something different, I could give it a different tag. Like I could give it an article instead of a section. So if this article was special, I'm sorry, if this section was special and I wanted to treat it differently, I could then give it an ID. Or I could give it a class. You're going to end up creating more classes than IDs. Because IDs, you're saying that there's only one thing, 
uh, for styling purposes, that is. IDs, you're saying that there's one thing and only ever going to be one thing on a page that's going to get the style rule. Well, you're liable to, at any point, add a second thing on a page that needs that style rule. So you're almost better off creating it as a class instead of an ID. The main reason in the past for creating IDs, one of the main reasons in the past for creating IDs was because all you had was a div, and now there's a nav and section and header and footer. So if you use those tags, there's less of a reason to use IDs. So you'll use less IDs and more classes for the most part. So I could do a class of important, for example, if this was an important article. And then I could put a style rule that, well, If it's important, float left, but give it a width of 60%, I was mainly interested in the position of this one, so I won't go back and change colors or whatever, but you certainly could, all right, using all the techniques we studied so far. All right. The next thing that we're going to, everything that I talked about so far was available in CSS2. The next thing is something that is a recent addition, uh, CSS3. And it is the grid method. All right. This is going to be, we're going to have a couple changes to the HTML here. All right. With a grid. Graphic designers love grids. That's like a true statement. That's like saying economists, economic teachers love supply and demand, right? It's their bread and butter. So graphic designers love grids. What's a grid? A grid is, well, this is a grid. Rows and columns of things. This, 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 and so on. That's an example of a grid. So if you look at magazine layouts, newspaper layouts, many web pages layouts, you'll see that some or all of, the, uh, all, of the, all of them are done via grid, at least partially. So when CSS added a grid form of layout, it was really um, a good addition to the tools in CSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over these to this week, because they were in last week's. And we're going to go over an example of a grid layout.
Okay, here we go. We're going to actually use a different prototype for this, a different example for this. Repeat that, please. Okay. Like, I did want to, like, like, grab the whole entire article. Uh-huh. It's just a foot in the floor, floor right? Uh-huh. Look at that, okay? Okay. But I got my footer all the way to the top of the page. Because you didn't do anything with the footer. Remember, if you don't position something, it goes in the flow. And so if you don't have any floating on that, then it's just going to display it one after the another, and it's going to overlap. So give it, do a float left on the, on the footer, and you should be okay. If there's more questions, we can talk about it in lab. All right, here's an example of a grid layout. All right, this is a grid. So you can think of this as a series of rows and columns. Now if you notice this, with this, some of the rows and columns, some of the, some of the elements take up more than one row or one column. So this essentially is a three by three grid. One, two, three columns, one, two, three rows. Actually, four rows. One, two, three, four. But this guy takes up two rows and two columns. So let's look at the CSS that, that, that did that. First, let's look at the HTML page. I have a header, nav. Section, 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 footer. So I have a header nav, a bunch of sections, and a footer. I have a, something around it that is a wrapper. And um, what that does is that defines sort of the entire grid. That defines the beginning and end of the grid. So all these things are um, part of the grid. I'm going to try taking that out when I'm done explaining this to see if I can make it work a different way. Now, if we look at the CSS for this, I say the wrapper has a display of a grid. The grid gap is 10 pixels. That's 10 spaces, 10 pixels between each, each, uh, uh, each grid element. And the grid template columns are 40%, 20%, and 20%. So the first column is 20% wide, 40% wide, rather. The second one is 20%. The third one is 20%. Let me change this. Let me get rid of this and see if it works. It doesn't. OK. So everything inside the wrapper is considered to be a grid element. The header, I have my style rules for it, and then I say grid column one, grid column start one, grid column and three. What this is saying is this, this element, the header, goes between column 
columns one and three. Yeah, that's a caching thing. Okay, this goes from column one up to column three. So it contains columns one and two. That's what the CSS says for the header. It <coughs> starts in column one and it ends at column three. It doesn't go into column three, it ends before column three. Likewise, the row of the header starts at column one and ends at I'm sorry, row one and ends at row three. So this is taking up two rows and two columns. One to three means it covers one and two. So it's only two. One and two. All right? The rest of the things don't have anything about the grid. So every other element within the thing that has the layout of grid simply gets placed one at a time in the different positions. This guy goes in row one, column three. This guy goes in row two, column three. Row three, column one. Row three, column two. Row three, column three. Row four, column one. Row four, column two. All right. Now, what if I got rid of this? Then, everything fits in its own element of the grid, like that. What if I wanted the, the, the header to go all the way across the grid? How would I do that? Well, there's only three columns in the grid, so I would say column one through four. And I'm going to get rid of grid row start. So the default is that a grid element will take up one row, one column. But I can stretch it out over multiple columns by saying it starts in one and ends at four, which really means it ends at three. I don't know why they did that. That, that seems goofy, but hey. So that will make that go all the way over there. What if I wanted the navigation to be on the side? I could make it start at row two and go down to two, three, four, five. should say row. So the navigation goes that way. What if I wanted my footer to be down underneath? I could say the footer Row start row start five column start one
okay, I messed something up with that. Grid column end. Oh, I, um, grid column end four. There we go. So it's another way to achieve that effect of the banner, navigation, and footer. Now, that navigation is kind of wide, right? How do I eliminate that? Well, I made the first column 40%. Let's make it 20%. Let's make each of these 30%. So it's another way, sort of, to achieve the same layout. It would expand it down this way. Oh. Right. So let's go, in fact, let's go and do that. Let's go and let's put in uh, let's see, where did we have that? I think in this one. We had a paragraph of Greek text. So if one of our sections had a big paragraph in it, it expands it that way. And if we wanted to achieve that look of that first prototype, the first couple of prototypes where I only had one section, I'm going to go and save this as index 2, just to demonstrate what we had. Get rid of all but one of the sections. I could make this real simple. Good Lord. That was the scary. Yeah. Well, it is going to be Halloween. Maybe, maybe the goblins are out uh, early.
I'm just making a second version of this that assumed that we didn't have quite as many sections. And it'll revert. The styling will be almost exactly like what we achieved the other way through floating. All righty. Yes. Yeah. No, this is a grid. So it's going to, if you say there's two columns in the grid, there's going to be two columns in the grid. Oh, okay. Yeah. What would this look like on the mobile? Probably not particularly good. <laughs> Um, that's so how it would look like on a Nokia Lumina. Not bad. Yeah, it's not horrible. Surface, it doesn't look bad. Let's just look. It doesn't look bad either. All right. Next time on <coughs> Monday, we'll talk about mobile devices and how that was a game changer. Um, some of these things we've seen don't look good on mobile devices, and we know that. But because we've done a good job this semester separating the content from the styling, we can easily apply different CSS files to the same page, and therefore rendering it one way for a mobile device and a different way for a desktop device. So don't avoid learning the grid because, like, well, the grid isn't going to look on mobile. Well, that's true, but there's other things we can do for a mobile device where we can have a style, style sheet for one thing, a style sheet for, uh, for desktop, a style sheet for mobile. All right? That's where we'll pick up on Monday. All right. We'll see you in lab.